Good morning, everybody. Uh, my talk uh, will be about the way how we changed uh, the graphical user interface in GRASS, and specifically the way how we engaged uh, the community into that process. So uh, first, because it was uh, very focused, everything was very focused on the user experience, uh, I would like to say a few words about uh, why the good user experience is so important uh, when you use uh, software. So basically, uh, the good user experience uh, consists of, uh, of three elements. Uh, a user can easily accomplish a specific goal, a user is happy about how the software looks like, and a user feels comfortable when using the software. And uh, how the bad user experience could look like, um, when the user experience is bad, it can decrease user productivity, it can uh, also lead, for example, to abandonment of the software by, by its developers and user base. And specifically with uh, GIS, it's quite difficult to deal with the usability because uh, the software is quite complex. You have uh, lots of features and also sometimes um, the usability requirements can go like against the nature logic of the software. Uh, well, so uh, anyway, we tried to change uh, the user experience in GRASS.js. Uh, and first, uh, in order to better uh, understand uh, the topic or what we actually did, uh, I would try to, um, to explain some uh, terms. Uh, it's about data structure and startup mechanism. Uh, so what is important is that in uh, GRASS.js, you basically need to first uh, define uh, your coordinate system and then you can import your data. Uh, we have a uh, quite specific data structure. Um, you have a uh, grass database as the uh, directory, and then inside you have locations like coordinate system, which you need to first define, and then you have map sets, which you can uh, basically imagine as sets of, of maps. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, here on the left, you can see some example of data hierarchy. Uh, you can see the sample database and uh, location, the common uh, coordinate system in Czechia, and this location includes two map set. Uh, the permanent one is mandatory, and then you have a flooding map set. And inside you have actual maps. Uh, and on the right side, you can see the startup window, which was used to define uh, that, that items, that uh, hierarchy element. And uh, this brought the tensions in the community because we had basically two, two gro groups of uh, community members. And the first group uh, was mainly teachers who taught uh, GRASS GIS and uh, were not satisfied that students were not able uh, to, to start GRASS and uh, to work with data and so on. And then we had experience community uh, which uh, recognized the advantages of GRASS data structure as well as startup mechanism. So, uh, and it was basically the starting point for our community-driven redesigning process um, because we wanted uh, to know more opinions on, uh, on many things because it was quite a controversial topic for us. So, the first was if we should preserve the startup window, for example. The second, uh, how much is the first time user experience uh, important for the project, 
uh, or for example, what technical solutions, if you would try to ch change that uh, somehow, what technical solutions would be uh, more user friendly, uh, would, be, would make grass more user friendly to first time users. Um, we used several ways uh, how we obtained uh, community opinions. Uh, the main was uh, for us uh, the way of uh, online questionnaires. Uh, we distributed a total of three online questionnaires uh, through GRAS mailing list and also social networks. Uh, in addition, we also used uh, GitLab, a GitHub platform and user developer mailing lists. And uh, here you can see that uh, the um, community engagement in online questionnaires was quite uh, high. Uh, we were very surprised by that and I think maybe some of you also uh, participated in that. Um, so uh, the first uh, questionnaire was mainly focused on the general user experience, the other two uh, for, were more focused on the first time user experience. As you can see, the number of respondents uh, is the biggest uh, in the first questionnaire, but it was mainly because uh, it was more general questionnaire. So what we found out, uh, basically it was um, quite interesting because uh, we found out that community is open to new solution than using the startup window, uh, if it will be the good solution. Because also the community was quite like uh, conservatory, so uh, there were opinions that we just uh, would uh, preserve the startup window. Um, also, community wants very much to improve first-time experience, and uh, in that sense, uh, they like the idea of an info bar displaying helpful hints and buttons. And uh, what are the uh, graphical user interface results of our community-driven design? Um, so. Uh, we made the first time user mode, uh, which you can see, um, yeah, it should be quite straightforward. You, uh, uh, you read the, uh, the info bar message and then you uh, first need to create the new location because uh, you have the data with different location probably. Um, then we uh, removed the startup window, so it's not here anymore. Um, you always need to start into some location. So for example, uh, when the location you previously started is not available, you start in the temporary location. Um, we also worked on uh, the single window graphical user interface. And uh, at this place, I would like to show you some videos. Uh, the first video is, uh, because this talk is mainly focused on the first time user experience, so the first video uh, is capturing how the uh, user started Grass GIS in the old version. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> yeah. So this is Grass GIS uh, 7.6. So you start Grass GIS and uh, you will see the startup screen. Uh, here you need to define your uh, data structure elements. So this is the sample uh, task. Uh, in this task, I just need to uh, import the data in our uh, commonly used uh, coordinate system in the Czech Republic. It's uh, one raster layer. Um, 
so you need to define your location. In this case, it's EPSG uh, 5514. Yes. And uh, when you define that, uh, the permanent map set is automatically created and you can start grass session. And the problem was that uh, the first time users just were not able, for example, or were confused by the startup screen. But the main problem uh, uh, happened uh, now. Uh, they had uh, problems with data import specifically, because now you just don't know uh, which function to use. Uh, so here it's uh, import raster data, simplified import of raster data with reprojection. Uh, so I will import the digital terrain model. Yeah, click import and that's it. But if you like wouldn't know how to continue, uh, it was hard for first time users to uh, get around somehow. And then um, I will show you the new startup mechanism, the new startup mechanism, sorry. And uh, we have here basically the same task. So again, to import the raster layer. And as you can see, uh, now we are directly uh, redirected uh, to the main software window. We can see the world map, like the default, uh, default map in the default uh, location which is WGC uh, S84. Uh, and then uh, we can create the location simply by clicking on the button in the, in the info bar. And also in the info bar, uh, you can read some information about how the uh, project, uh, projects uh, are organized in GRASS.js. So you click uh, finish and uh, now you are basically switched uh, to the new location and um, the map window is also switched and then uh, you can see the uh, second hint in the info bar which is for data import. So in our case we need to import raster data so you click on uh, import raster data and do basically the same thing uh, as uh, in the previous, yeah. I can probably stop that here. Yeah, it's... So um, we also evaluated uh, the graphical user redesigning process because we wanted to know if it really <laughs> helps uh, first time users, uh, this our solution. Uh, so uh, who participated? Uh, the, uh, it was, uh, everything was uh, made uh, in uh, my home university. Uh, we we uh, engaged to this process uh, s seven PhD students and three master students, so in total ten people. And it was it's uh, uh, important to say that they had uh, no or limited experience with grass. And the task was uh, again quite similar what you've already seen. 
uh, to import and display one raster and one vector layer. So we tested uh, the old version and also the new version in two layouts, so the multi-window layout and the single window. And we used uh, eye tracking as the main usability method. Um, eye tracking is uh, basically uh, the, the way uh, how you can track uh, how, where people, uh, where people, uh, what people watch. Um, and also uh, we used screen recording as well as um, the retrospective verbal protocol, which is the name for basically that users uh, repeat what they did uh, in the previous uh, task. So what, what are the, the results of uh, the evaluation? Um, you can see here the gaze plot from eye tracking, which means uh, where people looked the most. Um, and uh, we found out quite interesting thing that uh, beginners really put visual atten attention to the info bar, uh, that they probably read uh, the info bar as well. Uh, you can see this in both layouts, but the problem was that they just uh, not, in every case, they followed that info bar. So, and it's important because uh, if you not follow, follow it, you just can import data into the mm, wrong location. You can reproject your data. So uh, if we compare the results, uh, this was a bit problematic that uh, basically four particip participants reprojected their data. Uh, on the other hand, um, the participants who really followed the advice, uh, they had the completion time of correct solutions uh, notably shorter. We also compared multi-window and single-window GUI, uh, how users perceive this, uh, these two layouts, and we found out that uh, really the single-window is uh, much uh, preferable than the multi-window. Uh, what was interesting that still uh, quite many three participants suggested to add an option to undock the map window into a separate window. So what's the to-do list for us uh, based on the usability testing results? Uh, we definitely need to a bit more emphasize the role of the, of the info bar. Um, also, we need to emphasize the option to create a new location during the data import. Uh, if you have data in the different uh, location, then it's the target location. And also, uh, it would be nice to add the option to undock the map window into a separate window. So those are the main things. Uh, also, we had many others, but those are uh, the mo most crucial ones, I would say. Yeah, so that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for the attention. Uh, and also, I would like to thank, uh, or to say three, uh, to name three projects uh, which uh, supported this work. It's Google Summer of Code project, uh, I participated two years, uh, also Grass Gis Mini Grant, uh, and also my home university. And uh, in addition, I would like to thank uh, my mentors, uh, Anna Petrašová, Vašek Petráš, and uh, Martin Halanda. He's not here, but uh, it also uh, he's also yeah he's my supervisor, so <laughs> he's very important. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Linda.